It's almost 50 years since a disastrous event had the world glued to their TV sets and changed our idea of space travel forever. The Apollo 13 spacecraft and the three crew members on it, Jim Lovell, Jack Swaggart and Fred Hayes, were on their way to the moon, but they would never get there. Two days into the mission, a faulty oxygen tank exploded, starting one of the biggest and most fantastical rescue missions in history. Jerry Griffin was one of the flight directors at NASA at the time. I'm meeting him at the National Space Center in Leicester. When the oxygen tank exploded, we had never seen anything like that. And we didn't simulate that kind of failure. It wasn't until everyone was home safely that NASA was able to work out exactly what went wrong. Now, it happened up there in space, so we can't show you precisely what happened, but here on the safety of Earth and at Leicester University, we're going to conduct an experiment that does show just how explosive things got up there. A fault in one of the liquid oxygen tanks had caused the liquid to burn away, leaving a highly pressurized gas. Astronaut Jack Swaggart flicked a switch to power the cooling fans, but a short circuit created extra heat, which increased the pressure in the tank until it exploded. Dr. David Weston has designed this simulation, and I brought Jerry along to see what happened up close for the first time in his life. So what we're going to do to simulate this on a much smaller and safer scale, of course, <laughs> is I'm going to use a standard pot bottle. I'm going to half fill with liquid nitrogen. I'm going to supply some heat via an electrical circuit. Without insulation. Without yeah, insulation. Yeah. Pop it inside this blast box, and then I'm going to retreat. OK, Jerry. So when Swaggart pressed the switches... He was turning on the heat and the fans, and boom. So the pressure's building now, turning from liquid to gas, 200,000 miles from Earth. Going in the wrong direction. <laughs> it's quite dramatic. It is, isn't it? Oh, it, it is. Just... And that's tiny. Yeah, this test kind of brings it home that it was powerful. Even 50 years later, it, it's, <laughs> it still says, wow, we were probably fortunate that we didn't damage something else. On Apollo 13, astronaut Fred Hayes knew they were in big trouble. At NASA in Houston, Texas, I spoke to the man himself. Well, it, it was a very large uh, bang, a noise, and I could see a sea of debris, like little kernels of popcorn. OK, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Uh, my feeling then was just a sick feeling, was sick of my stomach. I really thought that, OK, now the game is on us. It's, this is survival. The first part of the solution Mission Control came up with was to send the damaged spacecraft towards the moon to use its gravity and slingshot back to Earth. We calculated several ways to do it and finally took the fastest route home, and, uh, and it worked. That was a sound decision to get us on a, on a path, at least, that got us started on the way home. It took four grueling days for Apollo 13 to return to Earth, with Jerry and his team working 24-7. It probably was fortunate that we were young. There was a lot of adrenaline flowing. I don't even remember getting tired. We kind of swung into a survival mode ourselves, and uh, we had a lot of food brought in. We had pizzas and, and fried chicken and all kinds of things delivered on the spot. It was... Uh, not in our vocabulary, not to get them home. Odyssey Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. At the time, you know, with the technology we had initially, it almost seemed like Mission Impossible. You know, it's been said that it was probably NASA's finest hour. <laughs> <laughs> 